Okay, so we're going to do um, the CLF4 plus ion on worksheet 11. And so we are assuming that we have done our uh, previous work and have done the Lewis diagram for that. So I'm just going to make some space here and draw that Lewis structure. So the chlorine is going to be in the center and then there are fluorines around it. There's four fluorines. On that worksheet it asks you to, you know, how many valence electrons and stuff like that. And so here we have um, the fluorines and the chlorines each have seven. And so there are five times seven. But then this has a positive charge and so I'm going to subtract one. And so I've got 34 electrons. And for the bonds, I have two, four, six, eight. And then I'll keep counting 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 32, 34. Is that right? It seems too easy. Five times seven is thirty-five, right? Minus one is thirty-four. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, thirty. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, Because I can't count. I've only got thirty-two electrons on there. I, I didn't think that was right. So you go back and count, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, and then uh, then you're realizing, oh, I have four times eight is thirty-two. I need another pair of electrons. So those are gonna be a lone pair on the central atom. So you're looking at this on the previous worksheet. And you're gonna look here and it says, how many electron groups? That's how many electron groups on the central atom? Five, right? So five electron groups. Mm -hmm. And how many lone pairs? One lone pair. So from the number of electron groups, we're going to determine the electron geometry. Five groups is trigonal bipyramid. I won't, I won't uh, mark you down for spelling as long as I can tell what you were trying to write. What's the molecular geometry? Seesaw. Because with the trigonal bipyramid, when you have one lone pair on there, it's going to go into the equatorial position because there's a little more space there. And that's going to give you the seesaw. And you could use the model, uh, the simulation, to help with that if you want. So the perspective drawing and include the bond angles. So you could draw circles and you could show, well, this one's coming kind of out at me and this one's going back and this angle would be 90 degrees and this one would be less than 120 or if you wanted to do it um, this way, that works as well. But again, tell me the bond angles. Okay. I just need to, to be able to tell that you tried, right? It might be ugly. It's okay. Just do your best. Okay, so that's Vesper theory. And then this section is the valence bond theory. So here, orbitals used in hybridization. 
we're going to look for electron groups to figure that out. Five electron groups. One, two, three, four, five. SP3D, right? So SP3D, because that'll give me five. I need five groups. I need five hybrid orbitals. Here it's asking for, oh, and I should have it's a plus in here. You can show the formal charge or you can put the brackets. Either one is fine. So chlorine valence electrons. How many valence electrons does it have? Well, it has seven, but there's a formal charge involved. Because on here, who's got the formal charge? The fluorines are all good with their octets and their one bond. And if we look at it, the chlorine's got a plus one formal charge. So then we have to take an electron from somebody. The formal charge is going to tell us who we take it from, or if we have negative formal charges, who do we give the electron to? But that's going to affect the number of valence electrons. So chlorine has seven minus one six valence electrons in this molecule or at ion. Anybody have any questions about that? So it wants chlorine's orbital diagram. So this would be um, the regular atomic orbitals and then next to it we're going to do the hybridized orbitals. So especially the ones that are just S and P, it's probably easiest to do them side by side. I didn't intend to make those separate different sizes. Um, but I can tell from this over here that I wrote SP3D, I'm gonna need the D orbitals. And so what I wanna do here is I want to show the empty orbitals. So that's D and then I'm putting six electrons in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Over, over here, I'm going to write the hybridized orbital diagram. Now this you probably wouldn't show on your worksheet, but we're taking, oops, definitely not like that. We're taking this one. I don't like that either. We're taking this one, and these three, and one of those. And so we're going to have five. We had five electron groups. We're making sp3d. We want five boxes all together. So five boxes. And I'm going to label that sp3d. And then what I have left are these four sad little empty d orbitals. And so I'm going to stick them in here. They're just going to sit there and they're still going to be empty and sad. I have six valence electrons. I need to put the six valence electrons into my hybridized orbital diagram. So one, two, three, four, five, the sixth one, I've got a lone pair. Uh, here, I've got a lone pair on the central atom. Um, so that helps me know I should put the electron in there. We're, we're never going to go up into these Ds. The unhybridized D orbitals are always going to be empty. So when we have unhybridized P orbitals, those are going to get used, but not the D orbitals. So there's my orbital, um, orbital diagram. And then it says circle lone pairs. So that's a lone pair, right? I should have the same number of circled lone pairs here that I have indicated over here. One lone pair, one lone pair. Okay? Fluorine orbital diagram. And again, might be kind of small. Just do your best. Again, we're just doing valence electrons. There's S and P, and fluorine has seven. 
so it's going to look like that. And then we want bond descriptions. So here there's one box, bond description for chlorine fluorine bond. Some of these are going to have two or three different bonds, and there will be indications. Okay, so this one is just one kind of bond. What's it going to be? Sigma. You always have to have a sigma bond because that's the strongest, lowest energy, always forms first. So the sigma bond is going to happen between a half-filled orbital on my central atom, one of those hybrid orbitals, and a half-filled orbital on the terminal atom. So for the chlorine, it's sp3d, and for the fluorine, it's p. So you're drawing the orbital diagrams, the hybridized orbital diagrams, and then the bonds are happening by overlapping half-filled orbitals. They're going to they're going to pair up, and that's what's going to happen. No questions.